to We Can Geek, your new comics preview for August 1st. I'm Mike Ortiz. And I'm the Chris Brown. What do you got? Well, my uh, my leadoff pick this week was one that I, I was ready. I was prepared to make this my top pick of the week, and then things got switched mm-hmm. around here um, as I was looking. But this is totally top pick material. This is Razzle number 15. If you've been reading this, if you haven't been reading it, this is it. This is the end of the story. You know, it doesn't stretch on, you know, like Bone did. Bone was a, a larger epic. This is... This probably took as long yeah. to come out as, as Bone did to put out, you know, 60 issues, and this is only 15. This was a quarterly book. Uh, really interesting, though. It's not Bone. It's not as whimsical. It's as, If you read Bone, it certainly has some dark streaks in it. I mean, it, it has. It starts out real light and then becomes this Lord of the Rings-type epic fantasy adventure. This, as I've said before, has some allusions to Tesla and some interdimensional weirdness and uh, what started out as an interdimensional art thief you come to find out he's some kind of a scientist and he's trying to stop something Mm -hmm. and other things are happening and there's all kinds of weirdness and people chasing him through the dimensions and and this is it this is the end wow so uh, I'm excited I think I'm probably gonna have to go back and and reread them all Mm -hmm. uh, you know in, in one giant giant clip uh the next book I've got here is one of these image number ones this is harvest number one by uh, who are our writers here? AJ Lieberman and Colin Lorimer uh, is the artist. Uh, Colin, it looks kind of interesting. It's about harvesting organs. Hmm. Kind of strange, kind of bizarre. Totally seems up my alley as I'm reading a lot of strange and bizarre uh, these days. So, uh, yeah, why not? Give it a shot. Image has been doing some, some fun stuff, especially when they get a little weird. Mm-hmm. Then I'm looking at issue number seven of Thief of Thieves. This, I believe, starts the next story arc. Um, or maybe this is the end of the story arc and then the next one, because I know we're getting a writer switch here, and this is still Nick Spencer at this point. Okay. So maybe this is the end of the arc here. Uh, Thief of Thieves has been a really great book. Um, kind of interesting. There's been some nice twists and turns. This is another one I think I might have to read from starting with number one and just read all the way through in one nice chunk. Maybe get a nice, uh, a little bit more of what's going on, some of the nuances, because when you're dealing with these kind of intriguing you know, crime fiction kind of stuff. There's twists and turns that you might not see when you're waiting 30 days in between. Mm. Next up, I've got Animal Man number 12. This is Rot World Prologue Part 1. We're finally going to get ready to have this crossover between Animal Man and Swamp Thing. We've been leading up to, you know, the crossover between the green and the red and mm-hmm. the rots trying to intervene. And uh, it's been pretty good, pretty interesting. Uh, this one is guest starring Swamp Thing. Mm-hmm. Leads me right into Rot World Prologue Part 2. Swamp Thing number 12. Guest starring Animal Man. So we're finally getting the crossover here. Um, looks like now we might even are, have... Are, uh, it's an interlocking cover. It is indeed. And and actually, Which is pretty they're, sweet. They're both written by Jeff Lemire and Scott Snyder. So yes. instead of one writing one and one writing the other, they both have kind of worked together on that. Well, one. that's what they said they were going to do when this crossover mm. comes. That they, you know, they were buddies anyway yeah. and they kind of were looking for a collaboration. So this should be real fun. Uh, you know, you're probably going to have to pick up both of those this week. If you're just reading one or the other, you probably need them both. Mm-hmm. Then, uh, what's becoming my, my newest uh, favorite of the, the horror books over there at, at DC, Dial H, issue four. This book is weird. It's not, the, the previous Dial H series that they did wasn't the old Dial H for Hero, mm-hmm. and this isn't the previous Dial H. I liked, you know, that middle one, which was kind of dark. Uh, I believe uh, Jock was working on that one, and... Kind of, kind of interesting Will, stuff. Will Pfeiffer, I think, was the Yeah, writer. he was the writer, and I think Jock was the artist. And uh, really, really weird, cool stuff. Now, this one here is uh, written by uh, China Mieville. 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 Mm-hmm. R- originally a novelist? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, weird stuff. Really strange. Yeah. The, the dial is now no longer in the phone booth, and they're trying to make that work, and some other strangeness is mm-hmm. going on. And our main character is now wearing a costume, even though it doesn't look like he is... Turned okay. into a hero, but he's got the dial out of his belt. Interesting. Then Daredevil number 16 by Mark Wade and Chris Samney. Obviously, you're going to get some great art. Mm-hmm. story's been pretty stellar. Very classic-looking cover, too. Yes. And I'll tell you what, the, here's the weird thing. Daredevil has been so dark for so long. This is probably the lightest thing I have in my stack this week. Because mm-hmm. this has been a return to superheroic fun. Uh, it's been some, again, kind of classic uh, style with the art and... Just really, really fun stuff. I, I'm really liking this book again. I had been let down there for a long yeah. time, but now we're you know a year and a half in, and this book's been been nothing but good. Uh, then I've got Planet of the Apes Annual number one. Hmm. Not really sure where we're gonna go here. Looks like there's maybe a couple of stories. Maybe we get some. It very much looks like a Rise of the Apes 
you know, cover yeah, more cover. than Conquest, even though the jumpsuits. Is there a second cover for that? Yeah, there's two covers. There's two different covers. So it looks like we got uh, some some various things. It looks like it's going to fit into our main story. We got First and Last Days, uh, A Boy and His Human by Karina Bechko. So that's Ooh. probably going to tie into maybe what she was doing in her okay. Zayas world. And then Old New World, story by Jeff Parker. So maybe this is a little... Oh, and the s- scroll, writer and artist Gabriel Hardman. Maybe this is a little, like, sampler of the... Boom, Planet of the Apes universe. That, that's certainly what it looks like. So yeah, uh, annual, Annuals used to be like that a lot. Yes. You know, with uh, multiple stories by different teams and just a little a little hint of the stuff going on in that universe. So so this should be a, should be a fun one. I'm yeah. looking forward to that. Nice. Then I've got G.I. Combat number four by, uh, by DC featuring the War of the Time Forgot with an unknown soldier backup story. Mm-hmm. I like this stuff. I love the War of the Time Forgot. I really, really like the whole idea of various people from various wars and various times are fighting dinosaurs in each other. That's fun to me. You know, they got to team up, fight some dinosaurs. There's guys with tanks. There's guys with samurai swords. Really bizarre stuff. It looks like who's doing the artwork there. It looks a little different. Now, Ariel Olivetti's um, doing the digital artwork. Okay, there we go. The for the War of the Time Forgot. Um, so, yeah, and, I, you know, sometimes I like Ariel Olivetti. Sometimes. Mm-hmm. I don't, but it looks fine. I, again, I like the story, and I think uh, JT Carl's doing a, a good job there. He's a fellow Michigan State Spartan, so I, I obviously want to support JT Carl. <laughs> then I'm looking at Mind the Gap, issue number three from Image Comics. This I, I like that cover. Kind of mm-hmm. kind of strange. You've got uh, you know the two characters who are kind of helping each other out in their coma form, mm-hmm. kind of laying in their coma form, and then also the way they would be normal. Just and the person that seems to have started it for our, our main character here. Someone went after her, and they've got her in a coma for some kind of reason. Mind the Gap kind of uh, is an allusion to ha- her having been pushed in front of a subway, and her she's floating around <coughs> as a as, you know in a coma, but she can sort of jump into other bodies. She already did that once, you know. She was wondering if she could jump into herself. That hmm. didn't seem to work out so well. Um, really weird. I'm not really sure what's going on just yet, but I like it. Cool. Really neat stuff. And that uh, appears to have taken me through the bulk of my stack. That was a quick one. Mm-hmm. What, are you, what are you looking at this week? Uh, I'm going to start off with Action Comics number 12. This is uh, Grant Morrison with uh, Rags Morales and a couple other guys uh, on the art chores. Um, this is still the, the young Superman. This is still set five years in the past. Okay. Uh, previous to this, uh, the Clark had, or he had, Superman had killed off his Clark Kent secret identity and adopted... A new identity as a firefighter. Um, okay. And, uh, you know, obviously we know he's going to be back as Clark Kent by the end of the storyline. There's this other character, this kind of man of tomorrow, sort of highly evolved human who uh, who's taken on Superman. Um, you know, this is, uh, this, is, this is Grant Morrison stuff, so it's a little confusing in, in spots. But uh, overall, it's still been pretty solid. I'm just kind of curious to see what they're going to do with this. Clark Kent's secret identity resurrection. Next up, Ultimate Spider-Man. Uh, this is part of the Divide, Divided We Fall crossover. Uh, that's a bit of a problem because I don't get any other Ultimate books, so I hope I don't need to uh, to read them to understand this. But uh, again, this is the ongoing adventures of Miles Morales. Uh, it looks like he's going to be meeting up with um, Aunt May and Gwen Stacy. Interesting. Who are not... In the previous issues, we're not too thrilled to find out that someone is running around calling himself Spider-Man. Um, he's also dealing with his father and dealing with his uh, criminal uncle. Uh, so just a good, kind of interesting, unusual take on the Spider-Man story. Uh, Bendis has been doing a good job. I just hope I don't have to actually pick up any of the other Ultimate books because I'm probably not going to pick them up. Uh, no offense to anybody involved. Uh, we got a little bit more Spider-Man. Uh, this time, Spidey is uh, front and center on the cover of Avengers vs. X-Men number 9. Uh, in the last issue, they uh, took out Namor. Yes, and they then did. the other uh, Phoenix Force mutants uh, all just became more powerful. So that kind of sucks for very, the Avengers. Very, very much like uh, J. Michael Straczynski's yeah. Rising Stars. So uh, <laughs> Takes someone out, the power disperses. Great artwork by, uh, by which Kubert? Adam Kubert. Uh, this is uh, Jason Aaron, who's been doing a great job on all the stuff that I've been getting. Yeah, it's pretty fantastic. Yeah, I mean, some of the stuff that's in hell or wherever magic is from. Great colors, too. But, uh, yeah, so the uh, the Avengers uh, are starting to get their butt kicked, butts kicked a lot. And it looks like Spider-Man's going to play an important part in this. Uh, every one of these has had kind of a nice little 
uh, what the hell moment at the end. Yes. Uh, we've got three issues left, so we're pretty much heading into the home stretch here. Uh, and and after that, we're going to get a whole new Marvel Universe that'll mostly be the old Marvel Universe with new costumes and new people on teams. But hey, that's comics. If you're not used to that by now, get over it. Um, but yeah, this has been a fun book. It, it, it's like, you know, when, when that girl tells you she's 29 again. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. All new, exactly like it was a few years ago. But uh, in any event, Jason Aaron's a good writer. This has uh, had some great artwork, a lot of fun moments. Next up, Earth 2, number 4. This is the uh, the new 52 Earth 2 Hawk Girl. Uh, they've been introducing the, the new characters as we're going along. We got Green Lantern already. We got The Flash already. Oh. We had uh, Solomon Grundy already. Uh, looks like we've got some Solomon Grundy Green uh, Lantern fight going on. Uh, this this is an interesting take on Earth Two. I like it. Um, it's it's this Earth Two is a little bit more magical based yes. than uh, than the previous one. Um, so both uh, well Green Lantern the Earth Two Green Lantern has always been magic based. Right. Uh, the Earth Two uh, Hawk Girl was actually the reincarnation. Uh, but the Flash was always a kind of a science fiction character, but now right. he's kind of inherited the powers of Mercury. Looks like we've got the uh, introduction of the Earth Two Adam as well. All right. So uh, yeah, we're building the team slowly but surely. Familiar names and unfamiliar faces. Uh, and all with, new uh, costumes. All new costumes, and uh, one of them's gay. Next up, uh, we've got Fury Max. I actually uh, I'm an issue behind. I haven't read the previous issue. It looks like. The, they're Trying still in, cash in, in Cuba. Yeah, this is basically Nick Fury's tour of uh, Cold War era hotspots. Uh, he was in Vietnam. Now he's in Cuba. Uh, yeah. You know, some interesting stuff. And obviously, he's probably not going to kill Cuba because they're trying to make this or kill Castro because it looks like they're trying to make this fairly realistic. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm really curious to see Garth Ennis's take on uh, on this sort of '50s era spy stuff with absolutely some fantastic artwork. And I hope I don't butcher his name. Last name is Parlov, and I can't find the credits page. Goran Parlov, really great stuff. A European artist. It's got that that European look. It's got kind of an Eduardo Barreto feel. Um, good, good uh, classic spy stuff. Next up is Hawkeye by uh, Matt Fraction and David Aja. Uh, Fraction and Aja worked together previously, along with uh, Ed Brubaker on the Iron Fist series, which, which I was, thought was fantastic. Uh, so we've got two of those guys on this series, and with that credit, uh, I'll give this a shot. It's got a great cover. David Aja is a great artist. Yeah, oh yeah. Fraction, hit and miss. Um, so we'll give this a shot. I'm not necessarily a big Hawkeye fan, but uh, with that creative team and, and a really sweet looking cover, a, a good writer can do you know <clears throat> some fantastic things with a character from yeah. time to time. And like you said, Fraction sort of hit and miss, but mm -hmm. maybe he can kind of breathe some life into. Into that Hawkeye character, the way yeah. he, the way he and Brubaker did on on Iron Fist. I mean, I've always yeah. liked Iron Fist, but they really made him a character, and an interesting character again with some depth. And one of the problems, I mean, Fraction's got big ideas, and sometimes those can get away with, away from him. So maybe having a character that is a little bit more grounded and down to earth, it can't quite get as is out there like like Perhaps. Iron Fist, which even though there was a lot of mysticism involved, was a very street level character. So uh, it looks like they're, they're making this a street-level Hawkeye, even though he's an Avenger. And obviously there's a Hawkeye book because of the Avengers movie. Uh, but uh, still it's worth it. And more specifically, Jeremy Renner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's, this is, this is the, the sunglass wearing, not the big pointy yeah. mask wearing. Uh, uh, this, uh, next up is Red Lanterns. Uh, this is another one where I'm an issue behind. Uh, last time I was checking in, the Red Lanterns were taking on the Star Sapphires. Uh, mm -hmm. It looks like now they... Uh, there's still some Star Sapphire stuff going on, and they're fighting some other big alien. That's, that's what happens in this book. They, a bunch of aliens fighting aliens. I'm fine with that. Uh, next, Smallville Season 11, number four. Uh, they're really expanding the Smallville uh, mythos. Uh, up Batman is going to be coming up uh, okay. pretty soon. This one has got Hank Henshaw, who uh, oh. becomes the cyborg Superman in the regular DC Universe. Uh, here, obviously, he's becoming some sort of cybernetic creature some sort of his, his consciousness is implanted into uh, a Lex Corp robot so uh, he's not a, a cyborg Superman yet but he's some sort of cyborg so mm -hmm. it's really interesting they're not bound by a normal DC continuity so they can just take these names much like the new 52 is done in, in Earth 2 take these names take these concepts do something a little different with it that fits a little bit more into the Smallville universe uh, so far this has been a pretty solid book looks like we got 
Got Green Arrow in here again. Uh, some more Superman and Lex. But uh, if you're a fan of the Smallville TV show, give this a shot. Next up, Think Tank number one from uh, Top Cow and Image Comics. Is that one of those pilot season books? Uh, I have no idea. To be honest, I know absolutely nothing about this okay. book. Uh, I saw that it was an Image number one. I didn't realize it was a Top Cow until uh, until I, I saw this cover. The cover I saw online had no copy, so there was no okay. uh, solicitation info. But uh, yeah, just every once in a while, there's an image of number one. You read the synopsis, it sounds interesting. You take a shot. Uh, it looks like there's an ad for number two, so it's not a pilot season book. Okay, so they good. got a number two coming. Yep, number two. So, uh, so yeah, I, I don't remember what the synopsis said. Uh, this guy's involved with a think tank, and I think he wants out, but maybe they don't want him out, something like that. You know, the tagline is, reading this book will make you smarter. Okay, I could use that. <laughs> I could go for that. So yeah, if, uh, if you're looking for something new to check out, uh, this is the one I'm checking out. And that's my stack. All right, well, it brings me to the top of my stack here. Um, I, I realized when uh, I got to the shelf here, I was like, oh, we've got a new Dead World. Dead World, uh, War of the Dead, number one uh, of five. It's going to be a weekly series, and you're one a week here for the next five weeks. And this is written by, uh, by our friend, a friend of the show, Gary mm -hmm. Reed. Um, local guy, certainly an innovator in, in indie comics at the mm -hmm. time, probably the creator of Creator Own Comics. Or Calendar one Comics and uh, a former retailer. Former retailer. He, Did, he was he, publisher at Caliber Comics. Yeah. He discovered guys like Brian Michael Bendis mm -hmm. and... Um, the Crow. Uh, with the, James uh, the Crow, James O'Barr, and, and David Mack. They, you know, yeah. published a lot of these guys' first work. And a great guy, uh, one of the promoters of Detroit Fanfare. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, looks like an interesting book. It's one of one of the earliest zombie books, long before Walking yeah. Dead. We had uh, we had Dead World. Back There's a with, lot of similarities between this and Walking Dead, actually. It, yes, and then Vince Locke was one of the original guys yeah. on the original Dead World. He's gone on to do some interesting things. Um, this this here, the, the zombies are a little smarter. You know, mm -hmm. they've got King Zombie who talks, and it is about the people trying to make it. And you know, like I said, a lot of similarities to, to Walking Dead. And this was one of the earlier zombie books in the history of it such looks like things. some kind of Ashley Wood style to the artwork. Yeah, the art is Sam McConan. Yeah, I've never heard McConan. of him before, but uh, really good looking stuff. Yeah, yeah, the art really looks fantastic, so uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that one, and that, that is my top pick of the week. Hmm. Uh, my top pick is Peter Parker Spider-Man, number 156.1. Uh, if you've uh, been watching the show for a while, you know that I'm a big fan of kind of these retro books. DC did right. the retroactive books, which were in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. Uh, this is a, a story that's kind of fitting in between uh, Peter Parker, Spider-Man, number 156 and 157. Uh, it's written by Roger Stern, who is a classic Spider-Man writer, one yep. of the best Spider-Man writers. Uh, it looks like they're not going for the old-fashioned style that DC did with the retroactive books, but it's uh, set in the past. It's a, it's a, a Spider-Man story that's kind of set in that era. Actually, kind of a nice retro-ish cover by uh, John Romita Jr. Yeah, uh, it looks like they're going to be continuing this into Sensational Spider-Man. Yeah, uh, they're all getting all those old titles. Yeah, are getting there's going to be a, a Web of Spider-Man something point one, probably an Amazing something point one. Uh, so yeah, I guess to capitalize on uh, Spider-Man, you know, the movie sure. and just the ongoing success of Spider-Man, there, there really is a lot of heat on this book uh, with with Dan Slott. It's been a really good book sure. lately, um, and I think it's coming up on a big anniversary issue too. I mean, 700 uh, coming in not too long, and it's, yeah. they're celebrating the 50th anniversary yep, of Spider-Man. That's exactly, so. yeah. It's 50 years since Spider-Man was created, so they're doing these kind of flashback stories. I'm always a sucker for these. So uh, so anytime you've got something that just sort of sat in the past, in between issues, especially if you go back and get some of the original talent that did those books, yes. uh, you know, I'm sold. So I'm probably going to be getting all of these uh, just, just to kind of relive my youth, I guess. Well, but, when uh, these retro books also, they... You know, it, it's taking us out of current continuity, so it's almost mm -hmm. like you can put your curmudgeonly in your back yeah. pocket and like, ah, I'm just going to read a story here. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, I, I don't remember what what was going on at the books at, at that time. I don't remember when, uh, yeah, when this neither. is supposedly taking place, but, you know, it doesn't matter. I'll give it a shot. I always loved the Peter Parker, uh, even when it was Peter Parker Spectacular Spider-Man and yes. all the different kind of variants they had on that name. So, uh, so yeah, it's a good time for Spider-Man. Right on. Well, uh, now before we wrap things up, for one, I'd like to give a, a shout out to a couple of things here. The, the band Type 3, a uh, local punk band that gave me this t-shirt. Now you'll notice this has Riley Rossmore artwork on it. Oh, nice. They, uh, they uh, 
Logan had won the, the sketch, and, and his friend uh, David Roman was uh, in this punk band. They wanted to put the image on a T-shirt, so they asked Riley, and Riley said, "Sure, just make sure you send me a CD and a T-shirt." Nice. So, uh, and I said, "Well, I, I want a T-shirt," <laughs> and uh, so, so I got my my Type Three Riley Rossmo T-shirt on awesome. today. Now, the other thing um, we <coughs> said we were going to give away that A versus X number mm-hmm. one sketch cover by our very own Mike Ortiz, mm-hmm. and uh, we had so many responses. All all you had to do was make a comment on one of our various things mm-hmm. about what you thought of Avengers versus X Men, and we had. Two whole responses. We had two tickets in here. Two. I was thinking about putting five of each in there, or whatever. Yeah. This is funnier. We got two. This is it. You got a 50-50 shot if you made a uh, if you made a comment. So pull one out. Our winner is Andrew Pullman. So uh, Drew, you uh, yeah, you won the sketch, and I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure you'll probably be in on uh, Friday. He's usually a Friday guy. So uh, with that, you get the sketch and uh, print. We're actually going to give oh, yeah. a print to uh, both of these guys because uh, we have to. Clint Clint Bernard also gets a, he gets a, a print uh, mm-hmm. of the colorized version of the sketch. And a thank you all of you for participating in yes. our wonderful contest. And uh, with that, that is your Week in Geek.